John, let's transition to a night I'm sure you're asked about countless times, right? Uh, you and Jimmy Superfly snook up the steel cage match, the iconic dive off the top. When Snooker flattens you with the splash. He's 1522 at 245 pounds. 15, 25, 20 feet in the air landing on you. Why? You know, it's all fake, fake anyway, so it didn't hurt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, never, never knew he was there. <laughs> uh, did you guys before, know? Right? the? <laughs> did you guys know? that it was going to be an image that lived forever like the way it was. Can you talk a little bit about how that match came about? Well, it was impressive, and, and uh, the territory was on fire at the time. So uh, it was the first uh, – USA Network was, was carrying it. Mm -hmm. I, I think at the time it was like a, like a, a cable, cable uh, record that they'd sent, it set uh, across the country. So um, – do you ever think, you know, this is going to be, you know, immortalized and, or, you know, live for 30, 40, 50 years as it, as it seems to be? Uh, no, I, I don't think you imagine that. You're, you're just, you're, you're getting through that. You're, you know, you're making, you know, you're appeasing, uh, you're ma making uh, everybody happy. Yeah. What they, you know, they, they, that's what they paid for. To see them come off the top of the case. So, you know, you, check that box, you know, so, you know, everybody, you know, you blew the roof off of that joint. So you, you know, you pick up your tools and go back to work again for another time. <laughs> yeah. And a, a spot like that, that might be like commonplace, you know, now, obviously, um, was it, it was, was it common or was it not back then? Well, he'd done that, uh, previously in a match with, uh, Bob Backlund for okay. the, for the WWF title. And and uh, Backlund moved the splash. So the and Backlund was a baby face. So you know, Jimmy was kind of a you know kind of a in and out. He, he hadn't uh, really switched heel yet. But the people, you know, he was already you know he already had one foot in, in the door as far as being a baby face and yeah. being, being loved like uh, nobody was, was ever you know loved like in, in New York or going you know reaching that brutal. Pedro Antonio Rocca status, you know, so it was, uh, it, it was kind of, it was ready. And then, you know, when, when we, when we went for it, you know, it was uh, what they wanted to see and, and what, uh, what, what put him in the, you know, the, what uh, memory book or the, you know, all time. Yeah, exactly. All -time, that history uh, book. Yeah. Did you have a good relationship with Snuka outside of the ring? Yeah. Yeah. I knew him from, uh, I know him from here back to, Dean's gym again, and I always tell that story about how he used to drive uh, Johnson and Busher, the beard, the liquor distributors, beer distributors on the island. So he would park his big truck, big uh, delivery truck that he went to all the liquor stores and grocery stores, and <laughs> deliver, and he'd come in and he'd come into Dean's and he'd, he'd he'd bang out a workout hour and hour workout and get back in his truck, left the keys in the ignition. <laughs> Fuji, and his, Fuji and his friends stole the truck. <laughs> <laughs> drove the truck out of the coolio, unloaded all the booze, then drove the truck somewhere and left it. Jimmy came out, looked for the truck. No, oh, there's no truck. <laughs> the, those are the days I was uh I was living in Waikiki Circle Hotel next to by Frankie Lane. Frankie Lane was the one that trained him that, that started Jimmy um okay. you know, taking bumps and hitting the rope and all that kind of stuff. Bless it, Daddy. Boogie Wooga Man feel good. I tell my people and my brothers and sisters, don't you dare, don't you dare miss online, rewind, recap, relive. Oh, yeah.